So now we have the concept of continuity. What exactly we mean by continuity? Now continuity is very much true, especially if you observe the graph, there has to be a certain degree of continuity. Let's take an example. Suppose there is a long road going on like this. A long road. It's You have a long concrete road and it goes on. But somewhere there is a break. Maybe there is a stream moving over there or there has been an accident and there is a lot of gravel and a lot of trash over here. So the road has taken a break in continuity. So we say it has become discontinuous. Over here. So we say that this particular road has undergone a discontinuity. Now, sometimes you may even have, suppose this is a graph, and you may even have some curves. So you may have some curve which may go like this, and which may go and like this. So, for example, here when the value of x say is 7, the value of y is say 1. So you have y and this is x. And here say for example the value of uh, x is 8 and the value of uh, y is say um, 0 0.8 or something. And here if you see look at it over here at this particular point here when the value of x is say 9, there is no corresponding value of y. That means there is no specific value of y. Because if you magnify this and see over here, this curve has ended here, there is a break. So in this region, all the various values of x do not have any corresponding value of y. So we say that this particular function has become discontinuous at a particular point. There are specific curves, cubic and square functions which could have this kind of discontinuity, certain functions we have. So, much the same way, but if you take a line like this, say x plus y is equal to say 6 or something, it could be just a straight line which is continuous. There is no, every value of x has a unique value of y. So, it's a typical 1, 1 function for each value of x. There is exactly one value of y, so we say there is a continuous function. So, continuity of a function means that for infinite values of x, there is there are infinite values of y. Sometimes, one there will be two values, uh, two values of x or one value of x which may have uh, two values of x, sorry, which may have one value of y, which is fine, but for every value of x, there has to be one value of y. So there has to be an image, there has to be at least one. Uh, there is a pre-image, there has to be at least one image over there. And hence, we get as a continuous function in such cases. So there could be breaks in continuity in such cases. So one way of checking continuity is whether there is this kind of a break. So it's the basic understanding of how continuity exists in a particular function. Let's so, for example, you have various types of continuity. Now, how can you ensure continuity? Now, ensuring continuity means that the value of that function should exist, f of x should exist for every x. Which means that, suppose there is at least, at least, 1x for which f of x does not exist, then we say the function is discontinuous. The function is particularly discontinuous. Say for example, suppose you have a function x minus 2 into x minus 3 in the denominator and you have x square minus 4 into x square minus say 9 into x plus 2. So this is a particular function. Is this function continuous for all values of x or suppose let us take it this way x square plus 4 into x square plus 9 into x plus 2 
upon x minus 2 into x minus 3. Is this function continuous for all values of x? Now, as long as all the values of x make it a determinate function, the function is going to be, um, it's going to be a continuous function. And that can be ensured only if denominator is not 0. Suppose x minus 2, and you cannot further simplify this, x minus 2 into x minus 3 is 0, which means x minus 2 is 0, or x minus 3 is 0, which means x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 3. So, for whenever either if x is 2 or x is 3, the denominator becomes 0. And if the denominator becomes 0, for the values of 2 and 3 as x is, f of x does not exist. So, we say this particular function is discontinuous for two values when x is 2 or x is 3. Or you say this function is continuous for all values of x except when x is 2 or x is 3. Suppose the same function was the g of x had become x square minus 4 into x square minus 9 into x plus 2 upon x minus 2 into x minus 3. This if you simplify will turn out to be x minus 2 into x plus 2 x minus 3 into x plus 3 into x plus 2 upon x minus 2 into x minus 3. So, here these two terms get cancelled and ultimately you get x plus 2 the whole square into x plus 3. Now, this function is continuous for all values of x. Any value of x you, you substitute over here, you will get a valid value for f of x. So, in such cases, we say that this function is continuous for all values of x. Here, we say the function is discontinuous when x is 2 or x is equal to 3. So, in a nutshell, one very important way of judging whether a particular function is continuous or discontinuous is to check whether the function is determinate for every values of x or there are certain values of x which will make the function undefined. That is when the denominator, any value of x makes the denominator 0, that means the function is discontinuous at that particular point or that particular value of x. This is one way of understanding whether a particular function is continuous or no. So, we saw that one way of checking whether a particular function is continuous or discontinuous is to check whether there is any value of x which will make the function indeterminate. Another way of checking is suppose there is a function say uh, 3x plus modulus of x upon modulus of x plus say um, 5x and you want to check whether this function is continuous for all values of x or no. Now, what can you do? We know very well that the absolute value of x would be positive value when x is greater than 0. And the absolute value of x would be the opposite of x, that is minus x, whenever x is less than 0. So, I will suppose I want to check whether this particular function is true or no for all values. So, you will see that wherever first, so you suppose you want some particular value of x here. So, we will try to approach f of x by for various x's by moving it from positive values towards x. In that case, so for positive when x is positive, then in that case the limit when x is positive will turn out to be 3x plus x upon x plus 5x, which will turn out to be 4x upon 6x, which will be 2 by 3. That means for various positive values, you get it as 2 by 3. But the same limit, if I take x from the negative side, you will end up getting 3x minus x upon x minus 3x, which will turn out to be 2x upon minus 2x 
which will turn out to be minus 1. So you see that when you are taking x values positive, you are taking a positive value of x as we approach from a positive value of x and you are approaching from a negative value of x, you find that the limits are not equal. That means the limiting value of the function is not the same. That means this there is a particular break over here. And hence, in such cases, we say that this particular function is discontinuous at this particular value. You may even take another example. Suppose there is a function f of x, which will turn out to be, uh, which is equal to x minus 5. Whenever x is greater than 0, but less than or equal to 1. And the same function is equal to 5 plus x whenever x is greater than 1, whenever x is greater than 1. So let me check, let us check whether as we approach, uh, whenever as we approach x towards 1. So you, you find that there are two different functions depending upon the value of 1. So whenever x is less than 1, so we say the limit as x is moving from a smaller value over there. This is called the left hand limit. Suppose it is some value just less than 1, say maybe 0 0.99. In that case, this particular function would be equal to 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. Now, suppose you take the right hand limit that is you are taking some value just a little more than 1. If it is more than 1 this particular function is not valid. So it is more valid here. So in that case you just take a function. So in that case the same function the limit of the same function will be 5 plus 1 6. You see that minus 4 is not equal to 6. That means the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. That means when you take a value of 1, uh, a value limiting value of one, uh, x just less than 1, you have to take this particular function and you are taking the limiting value of x just a little more than 1, you take this function. You find that the limits of this as we have done in the earlier cases, the limit of the function that is the function's limit is not the same. The left hand limit and the right hand limit are not one and the same. So we say f of x is discontinuous at x is equal to 1. That means when you put x is 1, you take x is 1 or a little more than 1 or a little less than 1. The values are starkly different. They don't seem to be approaching the same value at all. Nowhere near close to the same value. In such cases, we say this itself indicates that the function is discontinuous. So, two ways of explaining this, checking discontinuity. One way is to check which are the values of x which will make the entire function indeterminate or whether such values exist. The other is for that particular value of x, check the left hand limit. That means find the limit, the value of the function for values just less than that particular value of x. Same way you do it for the right hand limit, that is consider values just little more than the given value of x. If those two limits are closer to a particular value, then you say it is a continuous function. If it is not, their values are totally different. That means for that particular value of x, the left hand limit and the right hand limit are not one and the same. In such cases, we say that the function is discontinuous for that particular value of x. So these are two simple ways of testing continuity. Now, let us see how we can apply what we have learned 